Members of uh, council, ladies and uh, gentlemen, the clerk advises me that it is now seven o'clock, so I will call this council meeting to order. And I would ask you please to stand and join with me in a moment of silent reflection on our national anthem, O Canada. Are there any disclosure by any member of council this evening? Being none, uh, Madam Clerk, I believe that there are no agenda announcements or amendments. The resolution moved by Councillor Best and seconded by Councillor Chandler and be it resolved the consent items numbers one to eight be approved. Are there any one of those that uh, any member wish pulled out and dealt with separately? Councillor Best and Councillor Chandler? Uh, item 8. And uh, Councillor Chandler? Same. Same. Councillor Foote? Same. Eight. Any other item that any member wish pulled out and dealt with separately, with the exception of 8? If not, uh, Councillor Best, had you first. He has uh, two questions to staff regarding these uh, items. Uh, there are three uh, separate developments. Uh, one, what is the estimated timeline in terms of approvals? Because these are on the uh, approved allocation, but they haven't been approved for the planning yet. Ms. Koopman. Through you, Your Worship, um, these applications obviously haven't been received yet. The, um, the Milcon 3 development will not be able to proceed until um, allocation has actually been reserved through the upcoming program that we'll be discussing later this evening. The other two uh, applications do have allocation out of the previous program. Um, so typically it would be the same public meeting, um, probably a year or so for draft plan approval and then subsequently um, resolving any uh, conditions. Thank you. My request on this, since the uh, two uh, first items are 1,105 homes and 824 homes, I'd ask that uh, the staff and the recommendations put a request in to uh, copy the affected ministries such as infrastructure, health and education because these are quite large developments and uh, uh, we need to be reminding the province uh, what's going on here. I don't uh, see any issue with that being uh, included in the uh, report, Ms. Koopman, so you make sure that that's noted and carried out. Councillor Best, any further? Councillor Chilner? Thanks, Your Worship. Uh, Councillor Best uh, uh, asked two of the three questions I was about to, but uh, I, I guess my question relates to whether or not this should in, in fact be a consent item or should be you know, a proper presentation given the implications. Uh, just a suggestion okay, so to staff that perhaps this gets a little more of a highlight than being put in as, an, as a consent item. It's a little more important than that. Okay, uh, I think that's an observation, uh, I guess, but Ms. Koopmans and or uh, Mr. CAO, uh, I'm not certain uh, how that might be uh, dealt with other than it being a request for uh, consideration. So, Ms. Koopmans, you want to respond to Councillor Chandler's observation? 
Certainly we can table, uh, if there are future reports, uh, table them on the consideration component of the agenda. Um, having said that, it is likely that this would be the last out of phase application or, or request coming to Council given the number of building permits that we are, uh, have already issued and are about to issue. So likely there won't be any more out of phase reports. Mr. Zayo, do you have any further to report on that? Nothing, that's fair. Yeah. Councilor Chandler? Councilor Kluett? Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, similar question to Councilor Best regarding the, the circulation for the uh, Minister of Education, uh, all the people regarding education. Uh, we just had a meeting this evening about uh, some other issues that were coming up uh, from portable size and, and school planning. So uh, my question to staff would be, uh, uh, if these are, again, along the lines of the time frame, uh, because Thompson Road is scheduled to be widened, are we going to be building homes while Thompson Road is going to be under construction? I just want to get a timeline of that. Again, Ms. Koopmans or Mr. Brophy uh, on uh, that time uh, timelines with regards to reconstruction of roads? Through you, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, Thompson Road is currently finish the EEA stage. Uh, we're in the design stage right now and uh, construction next year. Thank you very much. Seems to me on uh, that, and I stand corrected, but I believe that there was a delay on one of those roads down there, and I just don't recall what it was, Mr. Uh, Brophy there, and I think the region was handling that one, uh, so I don't know if it'll have any effect on what Councillor Kluett was alluding to or not. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There, there, there is, uh, <clears throat> there's some issues with property, uh, so it took us a little bit of time to uh, realign the road to the uh, to the west. Um, Madame helped us with that, um, and there's a number of drainage issues that needed to be dealt with. Thank you, Councillor Kluett. Any further? Okay, that deals with the, uh, the consent uh, items. Uh, those in favor of the motion? Nothing changed on those uh, eight items. Just before I uh, vacate the uh, chair here and turn it over to uh, Councillor uh, DiLorenzo, first of all, I. Uh, want to welcome all my uh, colleagues uh, back. This being the, uh, the very first meeting of, uh, of the year 2020 and the very first meeting of uh, council for the next decade, and I'm talking about the next decade of, uh, of uh, the 20s up to 2030. Uh, I, I believe that certainly there's a, a fair agenda for us uh, for the balance of the term, and I'm talking for the most part uh, now, uh, the year 2020. And I'm uh, thinking about gridlock uh, that we have, uh, not necessarily just in our community, but in the region of Halton, and even on some of our provincial highways, such as uh, 401, that's an issue. I know we'll have to deal with uh, transit. I know we'll have to deal with housing. And uh, climate change, these will all be big issues as far as I'm concerned for the upcoming year and probably for the balance of the term of this, uh, this council. But I, I do believe that the town of Melton and the region of Halton, we're in a pretty good place right at this uh, point in uh, time as far as I'm uh, concerned. So, But there are challenges out there and there are many opportunities out there as well. And I believe that uh, this council is up to, uh, to all of those. So. Uh, I just want to wish uh, every uh, one again uh, a few days late on a happy new year, seeing that this is our very first uh, meeting uh, that we're here. So with that, uh, if there's nothing further, Madam Clerk, uh, this meeting is now adjourned. And if you'll give us uh, a couple of minutes and Councilor DiLorenzo will be uh, taking the chair for Committee of the Whole. Councilor DiLorenzo, this meeting is now adjourned.
Okay, welcome everyone to the 30, 33rd session. Um, we will now move to the first agenda item under presentations and delegations. Uh, staff report PD00320, Halton Integrated Growth Management Strategy, Weighting of Growth Scenarios. I will now call upon Jill Hogan, Director, Public Planning Policy and Urban Design for our presentation. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, I'll just wait for the presentation to get queued up. Just make sure this is working, perfect. So good evening, members of council, uh, members of the public and town staff. As Councillor DiLorenzo just indicated, my name is Jill Hogan and I'm the Director of Policy Planning and Urban Design here at the town. And tonight I'm here to give you a very brief presentation about the Halton Integrated Growth Management Strategy. Please don't worry, I'll explain what this means and why we're talking about it. And I'm also going to touch upon at a very high level the various growth scenarios that Halton Region is considering through this process. So what is Halton's Integrated Growth Management Strategy or IGMS and why are we talking about it? Well, the IGMS is not something a telethon raises money for. What it is, is a process coordinated by Halton Region, and for all intents and purposes, it's a, it's a plan to accommodate growth. The province has mandated that Halton Region accommodate about a million people and 500,000 jobs by the year 2041. Um, to put that in perspective, that's roughly a doubling of the current population in Halton Region. So why are we talking about this now and why does Milton need to respond? Well, back in June of 2019, a report was tabled at Regional Council. In that report, there were various growth scenarios presented along with a, an evaluation matrix for those scenarios. At that meeting, Regional Council voted to defer this particular report and the deferral was in order for uh, local councils basically to express what criteria and weighting best suited local planning needs. So that's why we're talking about this tonight. So what is the weighting and criteria? So at a very, very high level, it can be broken down into four themes. We have regional urban system and local urban structure. There's infrastructure and finance, agriculture, environment and climate change. And there's also growing the economy and moving people and goods. So really it's a no brainer. All of these themes must be considered. You have to consider all of these things when planning for growth. But we have to remember the particular question that was asked of the local council and that particular question was which of the themes best suit local planning needs. It's staff's uh, recommendation that theme one, regional urban systems and local urban structure really does best sit, suit our local planning requirements. So why theme one? Well, it's balanced. It recognizes our local urban structure here in Milton, but it also embraces the regional objective to recognize local identity and to promote economic prosperity and to preserve our natural environment. So we did take this report one step for, further. I'll explain why in a moment. Um, but I'd like to just touch upon the growth scenarios and uh, what they mean. So basically there's four scenarios that are being tabled right now. And what distinguishes between each of these scenarios is the amount of additional greenfield expansion that would take place. Um, when I say greenfield expansion, I'm talking about urban boundary expansions. So 1B scenario, you can see the scenarios across the top of the chart, that would allow for a moderate expansion, 2B, a limited expansion, 3B, there would be no expansion, and 4B would allow for the most expansion, but it would cap it at 1,000 hectares region-wide. So in order to comment on these growth scenarios, we need to understand what Milton's role is in the overall growth maturity in the region. And really where we're at as a municipality, we're at an adolescent stage. We're basically teenagers. You know, we have the capacity to accommodate medium and high density residential through intensification. We're seeing that happen now. But we also have the capacity to accommodate low and medium density residential through future greenfield expansion. 
We have room to accommodate large-scale industrial buildings, but we also have undertaken significant planning work to attract new forms of employment. So I described Milton's overall role in terms of growth in Halton Region. Let's look at some of our municipal partners, namely Oakville and, Hal or Oakville and uh, Burlington. Now they're at a different point in their growth trajectory. I mentioned that Milton is basically a teenager, while Oakville and, Halton, or Oakville and Burlington, I apologize, they're reaching sort of the senior stages of their growth. Um, they don't have any more land to expand. Um, the reason why it's very important that Milton Council um, take a stance right now on growth scenarios is because Oakville, for example, basically indicated that through the region's process, no urban boundary expansion should be considered and all new growth should be accommodated through intensification. So in other words, they're in support of scenario for, let's just go back here, 3B, no greenfield expansion. And what that would mean is that all future growth would have to be accommodated within the current urban boundary through intensification. Now, that's, that's fair and good for places like Oakville and Burlington, but the town of Milton, we have room to grow. It's really important to understand that scenario 4B that allows for greenfield expansion, but also requires 50% intensification in the built up area, it really would support our future urban structure. And our future urban structure, it's really our playbook. All of our council reports in terms of planning rely on this council endorsed future urban structure. Um, it's a really critical part of everything that we do. In terms of future urban expansions, it's really important to note that, for example, along the 407 corridor, we have future strategic employment lands, and we wouldn't want to miss the opportunity for Halton Region to evaluate uh, the bringing in of those lands for future development to accommodate growth to the year 2041. So just to wrap up and in conclusion, all of the weighting criteria obviously must be considered, but the question that was asked to local council is which one best suits uh, local planning priorities and staff is recommending that theme one should be given the greatest amount of weight through the evaluation process. We're also uh, indicating that growth scenario 4B, it really supports a balanced approach to growth and it best reflects Milton's growth trajectory. And also, throughout any growth discussions, and this has been a theme around the council table this evening, any timing and phasing of growth, we really must consider the delivery of provincial infrastructure for things like hospitals, higher order transit, and schools. So with that uh, concludes my presentation, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for uh, Joe? Mr. Chair. I saw Councillor Best and then Ch Councillor Challoner and Mr. Krantz, sir, there is worship. Councillor Best? Yes, if you could just uh, bring up that chart again, please, if possible, sorry about that. Just uh, thank you for your presentation. Looking at this uh, chart you mentioned about Oakville's choice of uh, 3B, what were the other uh, municipalities' uh, choices in the terms of their growth? Because I've got another follow-up question. Through you, Mr. Chair, um, the other municipalities have not specifically commented. Only Oakville has specifically commented at this time, and we just felt it important for Milton to also comment, given Oakville's comment. Uh, when are they expected to uh, make comments? Uh, Burlington has already put their report forward, and they did na not make a comment on the growth scenarios. Halton Hills, I believe their report is being tabled next week at the next council meeting. Okay, since we have your recommendation first from staff for option 4B, Oakville's 3B, the other two municipalities, who decides what option we take overall? Uh, is that a question that uh, has to be either a compromise or a decision by regional council one way or the other? Well, ultimately at this stage in the game, there's going to be more than one scenario tested. 
that's what this integrated growth management strategy is all about, is testing various scenarios. Um, we just want to make sure, or staff's recommendation is to make sure that a scenario is evaluated that allows for potential greenfield expansion. Um, we're not at a point in time where a specific uh, growth scenario could move forward without the modeling and the testing yet. Right now we're at the stage of what scenarios will be tested and how are we going to weight the various themes against those scenarios. Uh, last question, Mr. Chairman. Uh, looking at the densities you mentioned here that for the greenfield area, either 80 or 65 people per jobs or hectare, how does that compare with our recent developments such as the Sherwood and the Boyne communities? The Sherwood and the Boyne communities would be at a lower density than that. Okay, we're going to have some interesting discussions. Thank you, Councillor Best. Uh, Councillor Challoner, you had a question as well? Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I'm in support of uh, what is being proposed by staff. Uh, I've got some questions, though, around uh, the financial implications, Mr. Chairman. So, you know, what, what indication have they given to you in terms of, of uh, the cost of supporting this kind of growth? Would it, have they done any kind of modeling at this point so that we understand what the implications are financially? That hasn't been done to date, no. Okay. Have they given you any sense of, of expectation in that regard? Through the chair. Um, at this stage, at the high level analysis, there was some is extremely preliminary work done through a consultant through the region, and there was consultation with the area treasurer's group, which is why the, the speaker probably wasn't fully aware of some of the underlying discussion. Um, at this stage of analysis, based on the information, it wasn't showing a, uh, a significant differential from a costing perspective between the different options. That's in part just due to the, the stage of the evaluation that we're at. Um, the trunk infrastructure, when you look at roads, water, wastewater, which are some of the major cost drivers, wouldn't really be influenced as much by some of the uh, greenfield versus intensification discussions. They're more capacity-based. And other services at this level are generally done on a per capita basis, so it wouldn't necessarily pick up the nuances of intensification versus greenfield. So there is an intention and there will be more refined financial analysis later on once the, uh, once the pro uh, progress happens in the different phases. It's just at this stage there won't be anything materially that will suggest one versus another from a costing perspective. If I might, Mr. Chairman, uh, just a follow-up question on that. So uh, when we first in engaged on this in the, the early 90s, there was uh, modeling done around, you know, of a, of a certain size in terms of residential development, what would that drive in terms of school requirements, hospital, other, other institutional requirements? Has that modeling started yet as part of this discussion? That's where at this stage, things like the amount of school space required, it, it goes essentially to a little bit of that per capita analysis, which is where the intensification wouldn't suggest one, one scenario versus another has a significant differential. So there has been consideration when the analysis was done. It wasn't just of municipal services. It did consider kind of broader government services to a degree, I believe, including school board. Um, and that would also be part of further analysis where they do get a little more refined uh, once they narrow in on, on some of the scenarios more specifically. Okay. Just a, a quick comment, Mr. Chairman. I don't see us as, a, as an adolescent. I see us as somebody in our early 20s, now, now working on our own. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we have parents who need assistance, and for the last 25 years, we've been sending money down to them at, uh, in Oakville. <laughs> and, uh, and so I like to think that we're a little bit more mature than that. We have our education. We've got uh, good people around the table and, and behind us. Uh, and so I think that, you know, we're not uh, receiving public assistance. We're actually providing it. So anyway. Thank you, Councillor Chaloner, for that analogy. Uh, Your Worship. Well, Chairman, uh, believe it or not, and it might sound kind of cheeky on my uh, part, but I was going to pick up on the same thing in the analogy that was just mentioned there before with, with Milton and uh, Oakville and Burlington. I guess the question is, uh, and I mentioned that, the, that brief remarks that I made before, I believe that we're in a pretty good uh, position right now. And I support, by the way, uh, as I know it and understand it, what's being advocated by by staff here. But there's also another player. Let's just use that analogy, Halton Hills. 
Where do they fit in? Now, I'm a parent, I'm a grandparent, and I'm a great-grandparent, and I also understand terrible twos as well. Okay, this, you know, so where does Halton Hills fit into that analogy? Because believe it or not, at least in my opinion, they're going to play a major role in the next 20, 25 years. And I say major role. And I see the figures that are up there, you know, I believe they'll even surpass that in my opinion at the end of the day. Through you, Mr. Chair, to the Mayor, uh, how I would categorize Halton Hills, they're in a very similar place that the town of Milton is as far as their growth trajectory and the amount of land that could be brought into the urban boundary. When I was talking about adolescence, it was really on a massive land scale, not about our maturity as a corporation. Um, <laughs> Uh, but I would, I would say Halton Hills and Milton are very similar, whereas Burlington and Oakville are very similar. And those two stories need to be told, and we don't want Milton's story to be lost through this process. Okay. Chairman, one other uh, question, again, supporting what uh, is being advocated here, as indicated, I'm supportive of it, as I understand it. But these things are going to be moving targets. And I know when you aim at something, uh, you might have to refocus and re-aim again to hit that uh, target. So how is that going to play into the bigger scheme of things with the scenarios that we're talking about with that moving target? How can we equip ourselves to, to be able to move as society and other things move at the same time? We're talking about the next 10, 20 years. Uh, through the chair to the mayor, I think what we have to do is deal with what's before us right now, and what's before us right now are potentially for growth scenarios that may be evaluated through this process, and we need to advocate for the growth scenario that recognizes Milton. That's step one. Once that scenario is in there, I think Milton and, and uh, Milton Council and Regional Council needs to continue to pursue that option moving forward. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Councillor Tessa Dirksen. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for your presentation. Um, recognizing that this does move through the regional level as well, do you foresee or anticipate any resistance among our neighboring municipalities at the regional level with respect to our choice? Through, through the Chair to Councillor Tessa Dirksen, um, that's very difficult to answer, but what I can tell you is that the town of Oakville has come forward with a preference at this time, and that's for no urban boundary expansion. And uh, that's why staff felt it important that Milton also take a stance at this time. Um, Oakville has taken a formal stance in their report, the same report that's before you this evening that went to their council that is being passed on to regional council. Okay, so just trailing from that, it sounds like Burlington and Oakville particularly would be very happy with us kind of bearing the brunt of the regional growth, us and Halton Hills. That's a difficult question to answer. Um, you could also look at it that Oakville wants to take all the growth through intensification. Thank you, Councillor Tessa Dirksen. Uh, I have next Councillor Cluett on the speaker list. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, following along with everybody else, I, as the uh, mayor mentioned and others, I'm supportive of the, uh, the direction that we're taking. Uh, one of the quick questions I have is sort of the next steps. Uh, once, uh, as you mentioned, that Halton Hills is, will be reviewing the same thing uh, in, in the coming weeks. What's the next steps after uh, that means all four municipalities will have stated their approval or a preference for, for one of the things. Uh, so going forward, uh, I guess a, a nicer way of what battles are we expecting at the regional council level? It's my understanding that regional staff are going to be tabling a report in March, basically summarizing the responses from the local municipalities and uh, recommending a um, go forward plan. Thank you. I have no more questions from uh, Council. Thank you, Ms. Hogan, for your presentation. Next, we have a registered delegation. Uh, Wendy Wop Randy Roberts, I would ask if she could come to the podium. Thank you, Ms. Roberts. Thank uh, you. And you have 
10 minutes. I can't remember, did, did you also have a presentation? Well, actually, I have just one comment on this report, which comes at the end of my delegation regarding the next report. I'm happy to take my seat and roll those both into one within the 10 minutes, if that makes sense. So you're saying you, you have a delegation for the next report as well? That's the bulk of my presentation. Okay, and you want to do one delegation, 10 minutes, yes. on the second report? Yes, with just one question regarding this report. Sure, and you'd use the 10 minutes for the second one? Yes, all together. Uh, any objection from council? No, I, that's fine. I'll sure. take a seat. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I had some uh, clarification from the clerk. So, um, Ms. Roberts, council is going to vote on this item. Um, so, if, so if you're if you feel that your question may influence council's decision, I'd recommend it asking it now. Um, otherwise, the question would occur after we have already debated and voted on the matter. Would you like to ask it now? Sorry. It, Chair, might, uh, and I had the same uh, thought there as well. Believe it or not, what I'm going to suggest is holding off until we hear the the total presentation by Ms. Roberts uh, then then we come back and you know deal with the uh, recommendation at that uh, point in time because as mentioned they may interlock may intertwine there so question to the clerk are we allowed part, so. are we allowed to vote on both items after it sounds a little bit I haven't seen that scenario before So, Your Worship, we do have an, um, we do have a possible amendment for this motion. We do have some other matters. Um, if, if council is willing, I, I would suggest Ms. Roberts asks her question now to allow us to get through this part of the of the agenda and go on to the separate report because they are separate votes and separate reports. Uh, I agree. Uh, there, I have no issue with it. But it's always nice to uh, to hear the uh, the case before you vote on it. So, yes. So, Ms. Roberts. Thank you. So I guess I'll, I'll do the introduction. So um, good evening, Mayor Krantz, other members of council, Mr. Chair, town staff, and members of the public. My name is Wendy Roberts. I live at 77 Tremaine Road in Milton Heights, and thank you for this opportunity. Um, I'm just going to jump to, and uh, Brett, if you can put on the actually the second graphic. And we saw um, it a little earlier. And it's really the urban structure, um, the future urban structure diagram. And I've just blown up the left-hand corner. And my only point here is, is that it's showing a major transit station in Milton Heights, north of Steeles. I've had this conversation with various councillors over the last probably four or five years. Um, my recollection is, and I, and I had confirmation or partial confirmation with the Niagara Escarpment Commission this morning, is that they have indicated previously that it will not support a GO station in this vicinity because of its proximity to the Niagara Escarpment protected area. So my question was, um, have there been any recent discussions or consultations with the Niagara Escarpment Commission uh, regarding a major transit station in this location or phrased another way, is has the Niagara Escarpment Commission given any indication that their position about a transit station here has changed? And that's all I have on this report. Thank you. So that's a question to town staff. Uh, Ms. Hogan? 
Uh, thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair, hello. Um, it is a little bit confusing when you take a look at our future urban structure and you see that major transit station area there. Um, basically, um, the town has taken cues from Halton Region. Halton Region has shown in their transportation master plan the potential one day, maybe, for a GO station there. It has zero status. Um, it's not in Metrolink's current uh, planning framework right now. Um, we don't necessarily see it in their planning framework for the foreseeable future, um, but it has been placed as a dot on a map for conceptual purposes somewhere maybe in that vicinity, um, but there have not been any discussions at the town level with the NEC about this just because um, it's so far off into the future, if ever. Thank you. Um, so we're at the stage of questions for the delegation. I believe, Councillor Best, do you have a question for Ms. Roberts? Uh, no, actually for staff on that same item. Um, so could you wait after the... Are there any questions from Council for uh, Ms. Roberts? If not, thank you very much for your presentation and we'll see you back on the next item. Okay. Um, so Okay, so I have a motion to move the report recommendation, which was moved by Councillor uh, Challoner and seconded by Councillor Hamid. Uh, I'm not going to read out the motion unless, unless Council asks me to. Would any member like to comment on the motion? Right now I have Councillor Best. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just to uh, staff uh, to highlight the delegation's request, since uh, Tremaine Road's not on the, on the list, where does the Trafalgar Road station sit, even though it was uh, potentially approved in the 2011 official plan by the province, which Mitchell Links didn't seem to be aware of for a few meetings? If town staff are able to respond to that. Uh, through the Chair to Councillor Best, uh, one fundamental difference between the tra potential Trafalgar GO station and the Tremaine station is that the Trafalgar station is actually shown as a potential major transit station area in the region's official plan, so it does have some status, whereas the Tremaine is not. My question is actually, has staff heard back from Metrolink, so where does the Trafalgar Road station stand at the present time? Through you, Mr. Chairman, we haven't received any uh, confirmation uh, relative to that station at this time. Uh, thank you. That's what I figured the answer would be. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm just going to my comments. I do have an amendment, as uh, the Mayor referred to earlier, and I agree with his uh, comments. When we come down to these uh, plans, and uh, I thank staff for going through this process, we, uh, you know, it's like deja vu all over again and uh, from the 80s and 90s that you know here we are in the next uh, phase and we still have not seen the province come to the table i have a proposed amendment which i'll read out to staff already have it for me even better uh, be it resolved that through future secondary planning exercises the town will consider the timing and phasing of future growth based on, among other matters, the delivery of provincial infrastructure, including hospitals, schools, and higher order transit required to support the development of the, of the complete community. This is uh, one thing that, uh, thank you, as the mayor referred to early, or that uh, uh, Mayor, uh, Councillor Tessa Dirksen and I attended a event at the hospital today and I talked to one of their executives and I asked them and they confirmed it in writing afterwards. The hospital right now, due to the flu season, is at 100% capacity. Think about that. We just had a huge expansion. They were already at 100%. And even uh, more astounding, this executive also told me that the Ministry of Health does not plan hospitals for future growth. Well, if that's the statement, what are we doing here? Our whole idea of municipalities is to plan for future growth. Could uh, staff put up the uh, chart that I uh, gave them earlier? That's just one aspect. And I should have it here soon. I may be off in a couple of uh, items here, but I'll send it to, you might want to blow that up if you can. I'll send it to everybody digitally. At the present time, with Milton's growth of, what, 120, 125,000, we have 306 portables. 
and I hear from uh, Councillor Ali and Councillor Cluett that Jean Vanier is going to get another 20 portables just to accommodate current growth. If we're looking 20 years out, we need the province at the table and we need them to plan ahead, not in the past, because uh, as the Mayor, Regional Chair and myself have been to numerous delegations that no matter how many times we tell them, they still have not uh, listening. And this is one thing I wanted to make in writing to the province and their officials, that uh, those are just two aspects. In terms of transportation, we just heard from uh, go, you know, basically it's not even plans in regards to train road. My grandchildren may, might see this in you know 50 years' time at the rate they're going, and we see where you know. And I don't know we don't even have any grandchildren yet, but uh, I'm not waiting. Uh, but on this aspect, the 401 is about 10 years behind, and according to Halton Regional Police, it backs up three times a week. And we just saw from the weekend uh, snowstorm that any time there's any issue in the 401, it comes under local roads. So. I'm basically requesting staff and council that in this amendment that we look to the future and make sure that we have a balanced community which has all the provincial infrastructure because, you know, as I, to uh, copy the mayor's uh, statement, you know, you say you pay. Well, we're seeing a lot of saying and no paying and I just came from the Roma conference and, you know, they say there are no surprises for the next budget. Well, this is, you know, ongoing. We have to change the way things are get approved in this province. This is not acceptable when we have nearly 9,000 students in portables, enough for 10 more schools. This is getting ridiculous and we can't even keep up with our present growth, let alone, and based on the allocation plan, if we continue on at this rate for another 73,000 people, that's 7,000 people a year. We did 5,500 last year and we could barely keep up with that. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, that's my amendment, and uh, I believe the mayor seconded it, and uh, look forward to the discussion. Thank you, Councillor Bess. So I have an amendment um, by Councillor Bess and seconded by uh, His Worship. Um, comments on the amendment? Currently, I have uh, Councillor Kluit. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I guess the question to staff, and, and I don't know if it's uh, possible if we can get the amendment put up on the, on the, on the big screen, because I, I know you read it there just once. I want to make sure that we're uh, we're absolutely clear on this. I guess a question of staff or to uh, in general, if we make this amendment and it, and it passes, does this uh, have any? I know the province will pretty much just say yeah, whatever uh, to the municipality, uh, but does this have any implications uh, on future growth? Uh, if, you know, because no one else can predict out. We can't predict out the provincial funding for the next ten, uh, five to ten years. Uh, what's it going to be like in 15 years? Uh, uh, could we be painting ourselves into a corner if we pass this amendment as, uh, I guess, uh, the crux of the question? Through uh, you, Mr. Chairman, I'll start and perhaps Mr. Cowan uh, will assist as necessary. Uh, in terms of um, growth expectations, the province is mandating that uh, GTHA municipalities can cont uh, continue to grow. Um, this report is looking at different scenarios of how uh, we could grow. Through the amendment, what we're suggesting is when we do our more detailed fiscal impact studies in support of our secondary plans, uh, we can look at phasing and look at coordination with the provision of provincial infrastructure. Um, this, this amendment is suggesting that we will, uh, we will consider that as part of our phasing policies. It's not really uh, limiting uh, the growth that will be required to uh, experience over the next number of years. Thank you. Is any other questions, Councillor Clerk? No, that's fair enough. I, I just wanted to, I, I didn't get the, the beginning part where it said that the town will consider. Uh, I just, again, don't want to paint ourselves uh, into a corner when it comes to the province and the provincial funding. So thanks very much for that. Thank you. I have uh, Councillor Tessar Dirksen and then Councillor Best. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, certainly, I don't disagree with anything that Councillor Best has brought forward in the amendment. Um, I'm in principle, I agree. I'm just wondering practically what type of impact it would have. And 
really, it, I, it sounds like these are things we would consider anyways in our in our plans. So um, I realize that in many ways we have our hands tied with respect to how much growth the province is. Um, I don't want to say forcing upon us, but that's basically what's happening. Um, so essentially our hands are tied and this is just kind of a way that we can kind of stick our tongue out a little bit. Well, <laughs> and, um, I, I think it's important that the words are there and that it shows our position, but at the same time, I think practically speaking, I, I don't know if it's going to make uh, a huge difference. It, even if we went with a scenario with no greenfield expansion, the growth numbers are still mandated upon us. We would have to fill in with intensification, we're still going to have the same amount of students and the same amount of portables. So I guess I don't really have a question, but the comment is I feel like we're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place, which is an unfortunate position to be in, but I do agree with the amendment in spirit. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Best and then Councillor Chaloner. Yes, yeah, just in response to Councillor Cloden, uh, Councillor Tessa Dirksen. Yes, we may be pounding on a door, but we did that with regional review. If you remember about a year or two years ago, the province said they will be reviewing the region. 8,500 responses later, they changed their minds. No different than the hospital, as Councillor Cluett and the mayor remembers quite well. And basically the town, through a number of groups, such as the Friends of Milton Hospital, basically reminded the province their obligations to serve a community. I don't expect them to uh, change their policies overnight, even though they mandate municipalities to have a 10-year capital forecast, but they don't mandate their own ministries to do the same. You know, good luck trying to get a one year, and you know, all we have to do is see is school boards, the Ministry of Transportation. You can't even find out what they're going to do next year, let alone 10 years. My request, and if we keep it up long and loud enough, is they're going to relent no matter who's in power, and we've seen this in previous governments. When we get communities involved, we only have to, only have to mention a certain uh, issue called gas plants. How they, you know, spent a billion dollars after they realized, you know, what they were doing. You know, you put the pressure on and you keep it on, they will relent because we've seen this in terms of the hospital. Once they got going on it, in less than four years, we had a hospital. So hopefully, we'll do the same here. Thank you, Councillor Bass. Councillor Challoner. Yeah, I'm so, I'm in support of the amendment. Uh, it basically identifies those things that we raised with the province back in the early 90s. And uh, I think it's, it's always helpful to uh, remind the province of our concerns and their obligations. So, you know, if it comes back again in two years, that's probably not a bad thing either. You know, should the government change again? Thank you. Seeing no other questions or comments about the amendment, I will now call the vote on the amendment. All those in favor? Passed. Now I'll call the vote on the amended main motion. All in favor of the amended main motion. That carries as well. We will now move to the second agenda item on under presentations and delegations. Staff report PD00420, Region of Halton 2020 Allocation Program, Landowners letter, uh, Letters of Interest. I will now call upon Barb Koopmans, Commissioner of Planning and Development for an overview of the staff report. Good evening. Uh, can we have the, have you got my PowerPoint? In November of 2019, Regional Council endorsed the allocation program option one, which includes a total of 19,329 single detached equivalent units shared among the four local municipalities. In that program, up to 8,715 units were potentially available to Milton. The region's next step was to obtain expressions of interest from the developers. The actual expressions of interest uh, received in Milton equaled 8,410, which is just marginally fewer than the overall number potentially available. 
Specific expressions of interest were received for 4,563 SDEs in the Boyne survey, 709 SDEs in the Sherwood survey, including Milton Heights, and 372 uh, SDEs in the Bristol survey. An additional uh, expressions of interest were received for 2,766 uh, SDEs in what will be the future Trafalgar Secondary Plan area. Because this program is six years in duration and is to accommodate development for that period, it's important that the allocations reserved in Milton align and are consistent with the town's residential growth forecasts and this will also assist us in achieving greater continuity and predictability for the town in terms of our, our growth targets. This map, unfortunately the colors don't come through very well on the overhead, but this map illustrates the properties for which expressions of interest were, have been received through the current 2020 program. These uh, properties are shown in uh, sort of a uh, an orangey yellow. Considerable interest has been received for properties within the Boyne survey, allowing the completion of neighborhoods and the utilization of locked allocation from the previous program. There were properties that while they held allocation could not proceed to development because they were dependent on the extension of services and other infrastructure through adjacent properties that were non-participants in the program. With the exception of two properties located at the southeast section of the secondary plan area, the interest in the current program will allow for the build out of the majority of lands. In addition, through the current program, there is broader subscription to the program allowing development to occur uh, on a more predictable basis. That is, there are more developers in Boyne interested in the program uh, such that we will have greater flexibility in terms of bringing subdivisions forward and completing neighborhoods in a timely manner. Within the Sherwood survey, there are three infill development sites, all previously approved by Council, which have expressed interest in, the, in this program. In addition, there has been considerable interest for lands within Milton Heights. This will allow development in Milton Heights to move forward comprehensively once the technical issues identified by the town and its partner agencies have been addressed. Finally, within the Bristol survey, interest has been expressed which would allow the development of two new plans of subdivision as well as the Briarwood uh, site previously approved by Council. This additional map is intended to uh, include lands which were granted allocation through the previous program to give Council and, and the public a better uh, flavour for exactly how much development can occur. Um, so you can see that in uh, Block 1 of Boyne, adjacent to Tremaine Road, virtually the entire area is now covered uh, in development applications. The block between Broadie Street and uh, Regional Road 25 is largely now developed with just top-up allocation. Uh, again, uh, the, the majority of the rest of the uh, east half of the plan will also be subject to the allocation program and is anticipated to develop systematically over the next six years. You can also see from Milton Heights, there is considerable interest in allowing that uh, development to proceed comprehensively. The blue area in Milton Heights does have some allocation under the previous program. In addition, uh, the expressions of interest support the commencement of development in the Trafalgar lands, which will occur towards the end of, of this current um, program. The developers who have expressed interest in uh, allocation for the Trafalgar lands have really identified just the units so that they would be able to proceed towards this latter part of the program in the first phase of development. On an overall basis, there will be a combined total of 12,275 SDEs available to support the town's development objectives, and this is exclusive of infill and intensification development within the built boundary. The expressions of interest further allow a good mix of grade-related, high-density and purpose-built rental developments, ensuring the availability of a diversity of housing types and forms to meet a broad range of community needs and choices. In order for the program to proceed, the region requires Town Council endorsement of the distribution of servicing allocation on the basis of the expressions of interest. 
Staff recommends Council endorse the distribution set out in this report as it supports planned greenfield growth over the six-year term of the program. It supports the town's urban structure and conforms with the official plan and secondary plans. It provides options with respect to the orderly progression of the development. It ensures continued availability of development land. It unlocks the development potential of certain frozen lands. It allows the construction of a number of council-approved infill projects. And finally, it enables the comprehensive development and the completion of neighbourhoods, including the delivery of parks and schools, as well as important road connections. That concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Ms. Koopman. I have a question list of Councillor Challoner and then Councillor Best. Councillor Challoner. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm supportive of what is being proposed, and I appreciate the, uh, the work that was done by uh, the Commissioner on this. Have we... Uh, taken a look at this in terms of, of timing. So do you have an idea in terms of how uh, this, the units will break out on an annual basis over that six year period? Based on the information we have, it would allow us uh, to um, achieve the targets in the Boyne survey. We haven't done that kind of analysis on the Trafalgar lands as of yet, but um, Right now, uh, development will proceed in the Boyne survey based on the subdivisions that are, are currently allocated and will be allocated through that program. Those developments can proceed immediately. Uh, the development in Milton Heights is contingent on the completion of Tremaine Road as well as the relocation of a creek, so that will follow in sequence. There are infill and, and intensification projects in Sherwood that are essentially uh, ready to go at any time. So we would realize those in the shorter term, whereas Trafalgar, as I mentioned uh, in my presentation, will be further out into the planning horizon. So it will phase, and prior to Trafalgar, for example, commencing, we will be undertaking a detailed fiscal impact study as well as preparation of a tertiary plan to come back to council. Is it feasible, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, for you to put together a, uh, a rough time frame in terms of, of uh, the allocation of the units, uh, knowing that you know maybe there's an asterisk that's necessary. It's 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 a rough. It's not it's not final. It's an estimate. It might be helpful. Certainly, we can do that. We do have some information uh, that we work with annually in the preparation of the budgets as well. Uh, and we do that based on applications received, but also consultation with the actual builders as to what their building program is in a year. Glenn, I'm not sure if you wanted to add to that. Through the budget process, you may recall, we showed a graph that showed the forecast secured and unsecured. We have done an update to that of the unsecured of which of those units we were anticipating have participated or not. So with that caveat, as the timing can change, we can definitely share that. Thank you. You also mentioned, uh, uh, through Mr. Ch Chairman, uh, You've got uh, other infrastructure partners who are, who are waiting for this as well. You mentioned schools. Uh, I'm assuming the region as well for, for regional roads. Uh, and my assumption is based on what you've said that, you know, the capital is there from their perspective to proceed as soon as we proceed. Is that a, a fair assumption? With respect to the region, uh, part of their step is finalizing the allocation agreements with the, with the landowners, which provides the funding for those exact kind of projects. So um, yes, the intent from the region's perspective is getting the certainty on cash flow to support those projects. Uh, Mr. Chairman, it might be a good idea for uh, the various levels of the province to get a hold of uh, Mayor Krantz and Councillor Best's resolution from earlier this evening so that they understand uh, now what our deadline is. Thank you. Well noted, Councillor Challoner. Uh, next I have Councillor Best and then Councillor Tessa Dirksen. Yes, uh, further on to uh, Councillor Challoner's questions. Regarding the agreements, unfortunately I haven't had a chance to go through all the details, is there an expiration date on any of these allocations? Because I know this has been an issue on previous ones from 2008 and 2012 that basically they run for like five or six years, but there's no penalty not to use it. And that's one thing I'm concerned about, that you have some groups that want to go ahead, don't have allocation, but other groups that do have it and can't go or that don't want to go ahead. Through you, Mr. Chairman, um, 
In considering uh, the distribution of allocation, that's one of the considerations that we looked at. Uh, there are some areas, uh, basically when I was speaking about um, participating landowners unlocking other properties, that's been a problem in the past. This distribution of allocation does address that and allows these locked properties or portions of them to now proceed. It also tops up allocation to properties that, for example, uh, under the Regions Agreement could have 40% of their units allocated in order to achieve draft approval but they could not then proceed with development with only that limited amount of allocation or could only proceed with uh, an initial phase. Um, similarly, um, you know, there are areas where um, this program will allow development to proceed concurrently, which um, they benefit from the synergies of adjacent lands. So we looked at that in terms of the distribution and what we are able to achieve and the steady flow of available development lands and its staff's opinion that this distribution um, and the phasing, as I, I discussed in response to Councillor Challoner, really does support the town's growth objectives and achieving the targets that we anticipate over the next six years. But is there any specific cutoff date that if you don't uh, use this allocation, you lose it? I'm not familiar with the specific terms of this agreement. In the past, there has been, but it's, not, it's more a renewal clause that we look at it, and um, essentially the, the allocation could go back to the region. There is flexibility, though, in terms of the agreement itself, allowing allocation to be transferred among, like, by a developer to that same developer on other lands, uh, or with the consent of municipal councils between municipalities but uh, uh, allocation would have to revert to the region in order to be redistributed. I'd encourage staff to monitor that because there's been some builders have had allocation for like 13 years and still haven't used it. So it occurred. also you mentioned about uh, transfers. Is there any change in the agreements that transfers can be made from one developer to another rather than just within the same uh, group? Through you, Mr. Chairman, and not to my knowledge, the allocation would always revert to the region as opposed to being used as a commodity among the developers. Thank you. I'll, I'll go over that discussion next time because it's something that we've had that experience before, especially when there is a, uh, a situation when some builders, you know, don't have the funds to continue. That it may be a, a little, as long as there is regional and municipal approval to transfer between developers. But I ask staff to look at that in the future. Thank you, Councillor Best. I now have Councillor Tesser Dirksen with a question, and after that, Mayor Krantz. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Commissioner Koopmans, for the uh, presentation. I'm happy to see it coming forward, particularly bearing in mind the long-suffering residents of Milton Heights. I'm sure you knew I was going to bring that up. A couple questions. Uh, first, with respect to the affordable purpose-built, the 60 units that are, I guess, um, put aside for affordable housing, is that correct? That's correct. Can you just um, expand a little bit on how that number's arrived at? I presume it's based on some kind of ratio formula? No, what the region has asked for um, through the expressions of interest is to get a sense of uh, specific developments that would be for uh, affordable housing. And this is the uh, expression of interest of a particular developer identifying that they were interested in building that many units and it would come out of a central regional pot of allocation as opposed to um, being reserved by a specific developer at this point in time. So it become, uh, th that allocation would become available to them later in the program. Okay, that's great to hear. It'd be nice to see a higher number, but uh, still we'll take what we can get. Um, with respect to Milton Heights specifically, um, we had some delegations in the past, people who are on the west side of Tremaine asking of when uh, municipal services will become available to them. Do you foresee, if this does move forward, the allocations that the builders in that area have, do you foresee there being an opportunity not long thereafter for those existing residents to get access to municipal services? Through you, Mr. Chairman, once uh, the uh, infrastructure is available to Milton Heights, uh, the region will look at a program based on the interest of the residents in terms of what can be extended. Um, for the west side of Tremaine Road, there's a, a different uh, process that would have to be followed. Currently, it, that area is outside of 
what is eligible for, servi for servicing in accordance with the regional policies. So there would be a, a process involved in considering that and it would have to happen between the Niagara Escarpment Commission, the region and the town. Thank you. And just one more uh, thing I want to mention. You do uh, mention the report a little bit about annual tax increases. Um, and I, that's on page 51, the third paragraph. So just wondering if you wouldn't mind expanding a little bit on what you foresee. You've got the um, $2 billion required from a townwide capital investment, as well as an average annual tax rate increase of 5.26%, and that's from 2017 to 2036, correct? Okay, um, do you think that's a realistic number? <laughs> I'll defer to uh, Mr. Cowan, our, our CFO. Sure. So through this allocation program, units are going to a couple different secondary plan areas. So in the past, we would have done fiscal studies for the ones that have already been approved, like Boyne and Sherwood. Um, for the uh, allocation to the Trafalgar Corridor, we've done the high-level fiscal impact, which is where this comes from, which is really a look at the town on a, on a wide basis for even other secondary plan areas that we haven't even started introducing yet, like the MEV in Britannia. And the numbers we're quoting here came out of that study, which talked about the bigger picture. We do make the comment in here that that's the big picture outlook. It doesn't necessarily apply within specific areas, subdivisions, or secondary plan areas in isolation. Um, with areas such as the, uh, the Boyne area, the Sherwood area, I think it's fair to say the existing studies, the, the messaging through those has been fairly consistent and from a, a tax impact perspective it has been in that order of magnitude. With something like the Trafalgar area, we'll have the more detailed fiscal impact study that will follow the tertiary plan where we'll go into refining those numbers a little bit further before the actual development starts happening. Okay, I guess time will tell. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Tessa Dirksen. I have uh, your worship. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, and again, uh, I'm supportive of what the uh, staff is recommending here, but I do have a, a couple of questions. When it talks about uh, in the vision for possible minor changes, and I just wonder the interpretation of uh, possible uh, minor uh, changes, and would we, as staff, would we as a council seek any of those minor uh, changes, uh, how does that work? Through you, Mr. Chairman, uh, to the Mayor. What we were anticipating is if, as the region is negotiating the specific uh, agreements, there are slight changes to the distribution of, of allocation among the developers in Milton, or um, slight changes in the overall distribution among the municipalities, that uh, staff would uh, have the discretion to affect those changes without coming back to council. If there were any substantive changes, we would report back to council um, and uh, seek further endorsement for major changes. Okay, Mr. Chairman, uh, following up, I believe, on what Councillor Best was uh, alluding to uh, with allocation on how it may or may not be uh, distributed uh, there. I've often used the term use it or lose it. How is that going to work with uh, the allocation? As an example, if there was a developer saying on 500 units and or he or she wasn't going to use it for a year, two, five, ten, what mechanism is there in there to say use it or lose it? I would have to uh, look at the specific terms of the agreement. My understanding is that the region does uh, retain some discretion through the, uh, the allocation agreements themselves um, to look at factors like that. But because of the financial commitment that the developers are making, it's highly unusual that they would sit on it for an extended period of time unless there was some um, a prerequisite condition that was out of their control that they couldn't satisfy. So for example, when I was speaking about locked lands, there are developers in Boyne right now who are trying to proceed, but because uh, part of their servicing is dependent on adjacent properties that didn't participate in the program, they couldn't move forward. So usually there's a compelling reason why a developer simply cannot move forward. It's something that we do consider though when we're looking at the overall distribution because we want the um, properties with allocation to move forward. Um, out of the previous program there, because of the uh, early days uh, of the um, secondary plan and the subwatershed impact studies, there were some factors that slowed development, uh, whereas now um, 
those conditions or those preconditions have all been satisfied, so the development should be able to move at a more predictable rate. Um, there are also more developers involved in the program, so uh, we are not dependent on one or two developers and the number of dwellings that they can construct in a given year. It gives us a greater certainty and greater flexibility in terms of ensuring that we're achieving our targets. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. Seeing no other questions, I had a question myself. Um, the re report mentions this would enable the development of a complete neighborhood with um, schools, parks, and import important associated infrastructure. Would this also facilitate uh, in this new growth future places of worship and would the town be involved in any facilitation of that worth in? We have had uh, initial discussions with some of the landowners in some of the new areas and uh, we will be meeting with various faith communities as we're preparing future secondary plans to assist them uh, in terms of identifying potential sites and working uh, with them. In the Boyne survey, pretty much the subdivision design, um, or pretty much the uh, development has been uh, conceptualized through the tertiary plan. There is greater opportunity as we move forward with the tertiary plan in the Trafalgar Corridor, for example. Thank you. Seeing no further questions from council, uh, thank you, Ms. Koopman. We have a registered delegation, uh, Ms. Wendy Roberts, for this agenda item. If she could come forward to the podium. Thank you for coming back. Uh, as a reminder, you have another, you have a 10 minutes. Um, thank you. Thank you. Oh, the other one. Yes, that's okay. Thank you. So while that's happening, um, Again, uh, good evening, Mayor Krantz, uh, Mr. Chair, other members of council, town staff, and members of the public. My name is Wendy Roberts. I live at 77 Tremaine Road in Milton Heights. And again, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I've provided a copy of my speaking notes, um, so certainly feel free to ooh, follow along. Can't turn it, eh? Okay. We'll just have to go like this. Um, thank you. So given the time uh, limits for delegations, I may not get to all of my questions tonight, but um, I also appreciate um, the answers to some may not be read readily available this evening. So my very first request um, is for those questions that can't be asked or answered tonight, I ask that council provide the answers or ask town staff to provide the answers to all of the questions contained in this document within a reasonable time period. Um, if a meeting is easier or preferable to email, um, that would work for me, um, but I'm open to either. Um, I believe two to three weeks should provide enough time, um, and the reason I am making this specific request uh, can be found in footnote one on my document. I'm not going to um, <clears throat> review that here. Um, so I want to start with the Pinder Real Estate Developers Inc. And what I've done is I've taken, uh, I've blown up that portion um, of appendix one um, from the staff report. And this is just, <clears throat> surprise, surprise, about um, Milton Heights. And so the Pinder Real Estate, which is M32 and M33, um, kind of in the middle there, um, is the property formerly owned by Mr. and Mrs. Sandu, who were at one time part of the Milton Heights Landowners Group. I'm just gonna refer to that group as the developers. Uh, when the Sandu property was included in the earlier versions of the subwatershed impact studies prepared for the developers, a number of concerns were raised about developing this property because much of it of the land is floodplain and uh, not developable. Eventually, the property was sold to Pinder. So um, the allocation request in the town's report shows Pinder's requesting five SDEs for M32 and 20 for M33. Um, however, my read of the region's um, expression of interest summary indicates a total of 15 SDEs, five for one parcel of land and 10 for the other. So um, I'd appreciate it if someone could clarify if Pinder is requesting a total of 15 or 25 SDEs. Now M33 is almost um, due east of my backyard, so I can figure out where that is, but I was having trouble visualizing where M 
32 is, and that's for the five SDEs. Um, so my question, I guess, is the new Tremaine Road isn't shown on that um, map, and I'm wondering if M33 and M32 are divided by the new Tremaine Road. Um, so that's one question for clarification. Um, I guess my biggest one is, will a sub-watershed impact study be required prior to town approval for development of any of the Pinder properties? It's a fairly sensitive uh, area. Um, and will there be a public meeting or meetings required prior to town approvals for the development on the Pinder property? And I'm asking that because the Sandu, or the former Sandu property was taken right out um, of the Milton Heights landowners uh, development proposal previously. I want to move on to council approved infill projects. There was reference earlier um, that there will be or are infill projects in the Sherwood survey. And my question is, has council approved any infill projects in Milton Heights? And if yes, uh, where are those projects located? And are there any infill projects in Milton Heights waiting to be approved by council? And if yes, where are those located? And for council approved infill projects, is the town required to notify nearby residents of the projects prior to council approval? And is there a process or a mechanism available to nearby residents to voice their support, concerns, and or objections to council approved infill projects? And if yes, uh, what is that uh, process or mechanism? Moving on to the Milton Meadows Royal Park um, expression of interests. Uh, there's 10 of them, M35 through to M44. Um, the Milton Heights development webpage on the town's website shows three Milton Meadows Royal Park parcels of land, each with a draft plan of subdivision. And Appendix 2 of the town's report shows, this one, shows 10 separate Meadows, Milton Meadows Royal Park um, identifiers. So I suspect M32, 42 and 43 are what was previously referred to during the OMB proceedings as Milton Meadows North and Milton Meadows South. So my question here is, do the seven small parcels of property um, form Milton Meadows Hunt, um, which was not part of the OMB process, and the smaller parcels I'm referring to specifically are M35, M36, 37, 38, 39, and 41. Um, and then there's two others, M40 and M44, appear to be connected to the larger Milton Meadows Royal Parks development parcels as M42 and 43. Um, but I, what I'm looking for is um, why are those two parcels, M40 and M44, shown separately or being treated as separate parcels um, in the Milton Meadows Royal Park EOIs? Uh, moving on to Century Grove, um, and that is M50, that's the one in blue. Um, Appendix 2 shows that 100 SDEs re are remaining from a previous program and that there are no SDEs indicated for Century Groves in Appendix 2. Uh, the draft plan of subdivision shows 131 residential units uh, in Phase 1 and 28 in Phase 2 for a total of 159 residential units but only 100 SDEs. So my question is, will Century Grows Phase 2 extend beyond the six-year allocation program, or has Century Grove decided to reduce its number of residential units, or is there some explanation um, as to why we only have 100 SDEs currently and four not even in this program? Um, I'll come back to my request number two shortly. Um, there is one parcel of land um, that is not numbered, and you'll see it's um, actually just to the north, abutting M50. It's the orange piece, um, but it's not numbered. So I don't know uh, which development company does that unnumbered parcel of land belong to. Did that development company submit an EOI for that parcel of land? And if yes, how many SDEs were requested? So it's just kind of sitting there. Um, and then in terms of the last property, it's the Andron property, and that's M01, right at the left side or the southern portion of Milton Heights. And that leads me to my request number two, um, which is um, talking about the extensions um, and the local planning appeal tribunal, or LPAT, formerly the OMB. So on February 3rd, 2019, LPAT granted Mid Milton Meadows a three-year extension uh, to February 11th, 2022. 
and that decision states that counsel for the town did not object to an extension but indicated a two-year extension would be more appropriate and expressed concern on behalf of the town as to the length of time which this project has taken and is now likely to further take, quote, end of quote, um, and quote, the town has an interest in managing orderly development. In the end, a three-year extension was granted by, I do appreciate the efforts the town's council made to try to limit the length of that extension. Um, and to Councillor Tessa Dirksen's point, I believe the residents of Milton Knights also have concerns about the length of time this entire development is taking, not just specifically Milton Meadows. It has been a decade since the first meetings about this development happened, and it has been over, over five years since the major OMB hearings involving the residents concluded. So my request number two is should there be any further extension requests by the Milton Heights Landowners Group, I ask that Council require the developers to justify why an extension is needed, including the following to be demonstrated. Which conditions have they met? And we know there's like 200 and something conditions. Um, which conditions have they not met and what efforts have they made to meet those conditions and why were they not successful? If reasonable efforts have not been made, I urge Council to strongly contest the extension. And if the extension is granted, regardless of the town's objections, um, that Council request that the order stipulate what steps the developers will take to meet the conditions and request a reasonable deadline be set and that there be periodic reviews to ensure progress is on track. And really my last topic here is um, the Milton Heights Community Consultation Liaison Committee and draft terms of reference. I probably wouldn't be here tonight um, if we had such a committee already. Um, but according to the April 10th, 2014 OMB decision, 59 people had requested and obtained participant status in the OMB proceedings uh, in the Milton Heights uh, Landowners Group Appeal only two of which were commercial neighbors. So we're talking about 57 residents or friends of residents or family of residents who were participants in that proceeding. And when you think that Milton Heights has an uh, existing, uh, 65 existing residential dwellings, I'd say 57 resident participants is pretty significant and indicative of the interest the residents of Milton Heights have and continue to have for our tiny former Hamlet community. So in 2004, in a delegation to Council regarding the development, I requested that Council support in principle the creation of a Milton Heights Community Consultation slash Liaison Committee. I provided a draft terms of reference and asked Council to assign a staff member to work with a group of residents with Milton, from Milton Heights, Peru, to finalize uh, those terms of reference and bring them back for Council approval. Two local environmental groups provided letters of support. I forwarded a letter and resent the draft terms of references uh, reference a few weeks later. I followed up a few times after that, and I have never, ever uh, received a response, nor have the two environmental groups. So given the EIO, the expressions of interest, and the status of the new Tremain Road construction north of Steeles, I anticipate there will soon be more residential development activity in Milton Heights than we have seen in the last five years. I am, once again, requesting council support for and participation on a Milton Heights Community Consultation Liaison Committee. And Appendix B to this document that I've circulated is the drafters, draft terms of reference. Other subjects of interest and concern by residents, town, and others could be considered by such a committee. It doesn't have to be simply about the Milton Heights uh, development. So my third request, that council support and participate on a Milton Heights Community Consultation Liaison Committee and number four, that council provide me with a response to request number three. Even a no would be preferable to no response at all. Um, I have many, many, many questions related to the development in Milton Heights, um, some of which relate to complete community. This isn't the time. Hopefully it, it will happen at a community consultation committee. Um, I've provided a summary list of my requests and questions. And I think that is it. But uh, thank you very much for your time and um, I would be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, uh, Ms. Roberts. Seeing no questions from uh, Town Council. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, um, I have a motion to move the report recommendation, which has been moved by uh, Councillor Best and seconded by Councillor Challoner. Would any members like to comment on the motion? 
uh, Your Worship. Just, Chairman, you heard me say before I'm supportive of the uh, the motion of fairness to uh, Ms. Roberts uh, with regards to some of the uh, response. What's a reasonable night? This doesn't have to be part of the resolution, but I think it should be very clear. She deserves a uh, response, even if it's a no, as she, uh, that she alluded to. So when's that going to happen? Sorry, I apologize. I missed one part. I believe uh, Ms. Koopmans was going to give a high-level response, and then she was going to respond back in detail on more of the questions. And I apologize. Okay. I think you were going to, I think you wanted to give a high-level response during the council meeting. Just on, on uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, um, I'd be, first of all, we'd be happy to meet with Ms. Roberts offline because a lot of these questions are fairly detailed in nature and I think a dialogue would be a far more productive um, way of answering the questions than trying to just exchange emails. Uh, in terms of any lands that weren't previously part of plans of subdivision, there is a statutory process that upon receipt of an application, it would be circulated, we would hold public meetings, and that would provide an opportunity for members of the community to come out and address council with respect to the applications. Um, I think part of the confusion with respect to um, some of the uh, property identifiers is that the regional allocation program and the expressions of interest are based on individual property pins. They're not based on all the lands within a single application. So it may appear fragmented when in fact it, it actually isn't. It's just the way the, uh, the allocation agreements are tied to each individual property. So that is... Um, the reason for the number of properties involved. Um, other than that, uh, I would be happy to meet with Ms. Roberts at her convenience. And, and thank you, Your Worship, for that. Seeing no other uh, comments or questions, um, so I have the motion to move the report recommendation, which was moved by Councillor Best and Councillor Challoner. Uh, I'll now call the vote on the motion. All in favor? That carries. Thank you. We have three minutes until Councillor Hamid walks out. Um, regional Council updates. Are there any updates? Councillor Best. Yeah, in the interest of three minutes, I just want a brief overview. Which, uh, we've had some changes at Regional Council in terms of the uh, chairs and uh, vice chairs. Also had a presentation regarding Nelson Quarry, which I think will, will be affecting the town. So we've asked staff at the region to look at uh, the future of the uh, hall routes, which may come down uh, Britannia and Derry Road. Also, I attended the uh, TAPMO meeting, which is a top aggregate producing municipalities of Ontario, which I'll further up with a report. And also, I would uh, invite all councillors to attend the action meeting this Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Thank you, Councillor Best. Seeing no other regional councillors with updates, I adjourn this meeting. Oh, wait. Uh, plain water. Sorry, I apologize. There's a little section at the end. <laughs> Is remember the wishes to convene in a closed session. We have a confidential item on our agenda. Mr. Chairman, I don't wish to convene, but I am prepared to move the uh, staff recommendation. I have a motion by... Uh, so, uh, so, so I already have the motion, sorry, here, sorry, by uh, Councillor Best and seconded by... Councillor Ch uh, Challoner, be it resolved that the recommendation contained in staff report PD 00120 be approved. All in favor? And that. And then I also have the bylaws as well. Be resolved that the bylaw numbers 001 2020, 002 2020, 003 2020, 004 2020 be read, passed, and numbered, and that the mayor and town clerk be authorized to sign the said bylaws, seal them with the seal of the corporation, and that they be engrossed in the bylaw book. All those in favor? Passed. Ms. Clerk, am I missing anything else? Thank you so much for your help today. Now the meeting is adjourned. <laughs>